Welcome to It Came From A Box, this is Sergio AM, and today we're playing catch up because it's finally here. This is our first Xbox Series X and S hauled episode. Fight sticks are one of the best ways to enhance fighting games, beat em ups, run and guns, the list goes on and on, and this latest one by Hori is bound to be a favorite for both beginners and pros alike. This is their fighting stick Alpha. First thing you'll notice, it's large, with a thin profile, but a good size to use on your lap. And it's got durable grips underneath to keep it in place. The weight is a bit on the lighter side due to its mostly plastic build, but it's still very solid and well constructed. Also, I appreciate these slots off the side, which make it easy to handle. Up here, we have our essential buttons such as left and right stick, view, share, and the Xbox guide button, audio controls that work with the 3.5 millimeter jack off the side. Then, because you can customize the buttons on here through the Xbox app, you have a button to switch between your profiles. Finally, we have two switches, one to lock the menu, view, and share buttons to avoid accidentally pressing them in the middle of a game, and the other toggles between modes for Xbox and PC, which yes, it is compatible with. On here, we have Hori's Hayabusa joystick and buttons. They're in my favorite Noir layout with the buttons fanned out in this natural finger resting position. The buttons are convex, rounded out with a very nice matte finish. In use, they're bouncy, slightly spongy with just the right amount of resistance. Overall, very responsive, but they can get a bit loud. As for the stick, it comes with a ball top and it's on an eight-way gate. So far, it's been very precise and feels good in use with just the right amount of tension. Honestly, Hori's done a great job with these parts, but for those looking to mod it, the parts are incredibly easy to access. The chassis is held shut by this single switch and opens with a massive hinge, giving you quick access to everything you need. Very user-friendly. In here, we also have our 9.8-foot cable wrapped around these pegs. Not a big fan of this approach, it's a bit tedious, and you gotta do it right or it won't close. But then you also risk accidentally pulling or damaging the exposed cables in there. So because of that, I normally just keep the cable outside. On a lighter note, you can also swap out the artwork for your own, but you gotta remove eight screws to access the compartment, which is also necessary to remove the parts. It's awesome to find a stick like this that performs so well right out the box, but also makes it dead simple to customize. So whether you're a first timer or looking to upgrade, you can't go wrong with Hori's Fighting Stick Alpha. Now, before we continue, this video is brought to you by our friends over at NordVPN. <laughs> Did you know that if you use your internet browser in incognito or privacy mode, your internet provider, your ISP, can still track the websites you visit? And if that's not enough, at least here in the States, they can legally sell that data. Well, what's wrong with that? I, that's a weird voice, but uh, everything is wrong with that. With NordVPN, you can safely and privately browse the internet by rerouting your IP address so it appears as if you're in another location. This way, your ISP sees a stream of encrypted traffic and everyone else sees you connecting from, say, the UK. All while maintaining a great connection thanks to their Nordlinks protocol, which makes them the fastest VPN on the market. But there's more. With NordVPN, you can securely access open Wi-Fi connections, avoid ISP throttling, access geo-blocked content, and there's also their new easy-to-use threat protection, which helps guard against things like malicious websites and intrusive ads, even if you're not connected to a VPN server. There's a lot more to it, so check it out for yourself. Head over to nordvpn.com slash it came from a box or click the link down in the description below to get an exclusive deal so you can protect yourself and your data online with NordVPN. We use it every time we go live on stream to hide our IP address and protect against DDoS attacks. Um, not that we're famous enough for that to happen, but uh, better safe than sorry. We've been using them for years now. We're connected 24 seven and I can highly recommend it. So if you'd like to support what we do here, please give them a try because they support us. This next one is what this series is all about. This is Hori's very niche 3D surround gaming neck set. Yes, a neck set. As the name implies, it sits right on your neck. It's very lightweight, well constructed, and after a while, you'll forget you're wearing it. On it, you've got all your ports and audio controls such as volume and mute, along with the speakers down the sides. Inside, we've got a rechargeable battery that can last up to 10 hours. 
but it's not wireless, so you're going to have to hook it up to the controller with the included 3.5 millimeter audio cable. Now, one thing to note is that you got to increase the headset volume through the Xbox. Otherwise, it'll sound way too low, but also this way you can quickly adjust the full range of volume with just the rocker on the next set. In use, I was surprised that the experience felt more like on ear headphones. Sound quality is very good, albeit a bit tinny. Don't shoot that It's not the best I've heard, but it's more than enough to help immerse you in the game. It's got two modes. First is the balanced bass boost. And the second, our favorite, is FPS mode, which enhances sounds like explosions, gunshots, and footsteps, which really helps give you an edge in shooters. The surround sound is surprisingly good and really helps you locate and associate distances with things going on all around you. Power items on the way! But since it's not on your ears like a headset, it actually feels more like how you'd experience sound in real life and sort of tricks your mind into accepting that you're in that environment. Next, the mic has good echo cancellation, but aside from that, uh, it's not the best. As you can hear, it's low quality, a bit crackly, and randomly dips in and out. So it's not the best out there, but should be sufficient for basic voice comms. So to keep it simple, this thing is a blast to use. It's really fun. And as someone with big ears who can't wear a headset for too long, it's a great alternative that makes you feel the way you'd imagine it sounds inside Iron Man's helmet. As you know, the Xbox Series X is a big boy. We had no space to put it in this tiny room, so instead we decided to mount it. There's a lot of options out there, most which are metal frames, but we opted for the road less traveled. This is the floating grip. Inside the box you get string and some plastic tabs. I know, I know, calm down. Screws with anchors and instructions that also serve as our guide. We decided to place it under our unboxing desk since there's a lot of wall space there and set up a simple. You just place the guide over the location you want to install it on, measure it out and mark the holes, drill and install your anchors, screw in the plastic tabs, and then with a few loop-de-loops around those tabs, which you have to be very precise with, you'll end up with pretty much a net for the console to hang in. This can hold up to 22 pounds and the Xbox Series X weighs below 10, so it's more than enough. Once it's in, it has a nice fit and even if your screws aren't perfectly aligned, you can carefully rotate and straighten out the console. On there, it still has room for the vents to breathe, while still leaving all the ports, buttons, and disc tray accessible. So I know the idea sounds crazy, like who wants to hang a $500 console on some string, but if you do it right, it's actually very safe. We've had it here for well over a year now, never had a problem with it, it still holds strong, and both the console and grip system are really easy to remove. So if you're looking to save some space with a simple approach, check out the floating grip. If you haven't by now, you gotta get your hands on a second controller for multiplayer or even to use with the underrated co-pilot mode. But before you do, keep in mind that the previous Xbox One controllers are also compatible with the Series X and S. The latest iteration of Xbox controller is not so much next gen as it is an update on an already tried and tested design. No, we don't have anything like motion controls, a built-in mic, or even a rechargeable battery, but it still has things like dual connectivity support, the 3.5 millimeter jack, and the expansion port, which keeps it compatible with most of the previous accessories. As for what's new, we now have a dedicated share button. Press it once to take a screenshot, hold it to record a clip, and double tap to share recent captures. But you also have the option to fully customize those shortcuts. Speaking of which, that customization also applies to the rest of the controller where you can remap just about every button as well as swap sticks and triggers, invert stick axis, and turn vibration on or off. Next, we have a new hybrid D-pad that's become a favorite. It's similar to the one on the Elite Series 2 controller, but more concave, and as you can hear, it's very clicky. I wouldn't use it in a library, but it does provide awesome tactile feedback. Up top, we now have a USB-C port, which can power the controller even without a battery attached, but it's also how you charge the official battery pack sold separately. Finally, there's the slightly modified ergonomics, which include textured shoulder and trigger buttons, as well as the grips. It's subtle, but works well and feels great to hold. Now for the fun part, there's so many variations available. 
Since launch, there's been 12 retail releases, not counting those from bundles or giveaways, and some limited edition versions also come with slightly different materials for things like the grips. Then there's the awesome Xbox Design Lab, where you can customize your own controller, now with rubberized grips and metallic parts. Here's a look at the ones my kids made for me. And that's the old reliable, new Xbox controller. Proving that if it ain't broke, don't fix it, uh, but uh, you know, just, just slightly update it. The grips on the new Xbox controller are awesome, but if you want to go a step further, check out these protective skins from Play Vital. They're made of an anti-slip silicone, and to install, you just stretch it over and make sure everything lines up. The fit is just about perfect, no stretched out parts or loose edges, and they've got precise, spacious cutouts. The buttons, ports, and battery cover are still accessible, but sadly, they're not compatible with most adapters that require a perfect fit at the bottom unless you decide to mod it with some scissors. They're available in a few cool looking designs that have different types of grips. Currently our favorite is this one with studs. It's really comfortable to hold and gives you an awesome grip, especially if you have sweaty hands. They've also got some very unique colors, but even the matching black and white ones look great. As for protection, these offer just enough to defend against scuffs, scratches, and the occasional drop, but they also help keep the controller clean of the dirt and oil from your hands. I mean, look at this one my five-year-old wrecked. So if you want to enhance your grip while protecting your controller from the kids, or you're looking to keep those limited edition controllers in pristine condition, I can highly recommend these grips. The file size of games gets bigger year after year, and with services like Game Pass that give you access to a massive library of games, before you know it, you're gonna run out of internal storage. Now luckily, you can plug in your own external hard drive, which works fine for last-gen games, but it can only store, not play, newer titles that are optimized to run off the Xbox's internal storage since it utilizes their fancy velocity architecture. So one workaround is to shuffle those new games between drives as you play, or you can upgrade to Seagate's Storage Expansion Card, an NVMe SSD that's engineered to deliver the same performance as the internal drive. This is the one terabyte model, but it's also available in 512 gigs and two terabyte capacities. In hand, this thing is really well made, feels very premium, and the form factor sort of reminds me of memory cards from back in the day. I mean, it's pretty much the same concept and it's just as easy to use. You simply pop it right in the expansion slot on the back of the console and you don't even have to format it. You just start downloading your games. Then in settings, you have the option to make it the default installation drive, view and uninstall what's in it, or you can transfer games between your drives at speeds of up to 2.4 gigabits per second. And another handy feature, these cards are hot swappable so you can easily move them between consoles without ever having to power them down. Now all that comes at a hefty price. Currently, in the States, it's $140 for the 512 gig card, $220 for the one terabyte, and the two terabyte costs a whopping $400. That's $100 more than the Xbox Series S. On top of that, keep in mind that that proprietary connection makes these exclusive to Xbox Series consoles, so you can't use them with your other devices. A tough pill to swallow, but that being said, as someone who's always jumping around games and shuffling them between drives for a while now, it's an awesome quality of life upgrade that's not necessary, it's a luxury. Let's be honest, on-screen keyboards suck. You're better off using the Xbox app to type through your phone or just plugging in a normal keyboard but one of the most convenient options is an attachable chat pad. But with no signs of a new one and with only low quality third party options available, I caved and picked up a lightly used Xbox One version on eBay. It comes with both the chat pad as well as a basic wired headset that connects to the extended 3.5 millimeter jack at the bottom. The chat pad is compatible and officially supported with the new Xbox controller as well as the Elite Series 2, but you may have to update it in the settings. The build quality is very sturdy. We've got a standard layout with rounded out keys, tactile bumps on F and J, but it also lights up as soon as you start using it, which is a lifesaver in the dark. And it fades out after a few seconds. On here, you've got all the basic characters you need with additional marks and symbols accessible via the green and orange shift keys. Then off the sides, we have volume balance for game and chat, volume control with a mute button next to it. Finally, we've got X1 and X2 keys next to the spacebar that you can customize in settings with a few preset options such as take screenshot and record what happened. So I wouldn't call it a necessity, but it's by far one of my favorite gadgets for the Xbox. 
But considering how rare it is these days, here's hoping we get a new one soon. Since the new Xbox controller still comes with normal AA's, one of your first upgrades should be a rechargeable battery pack. There is an official one available, but for just a bit less, you can actually get two in PDP Gaming's Play and Charge Kit. They're 1200 milliamps, which gives you about 20 hours of playtime. They charge via micro USB. Wish it was USB-C. They have a notification LED so you know when they're topped off. On the side, it has pins that work with their charge system and you can charge and play with the included 10-foot cable. Because of their design, it also comes with two sets of covers, one for the new controller and the other for the previous Xbox One version with cutouts for those ports. But I will add, it's a bit odd to have two ports at the top. We've been using these for months now, they're a must-have in our kit, they're very reliable, they last as long as they say, and when you consider that you won't have to keep buying batteries, they'll eventually pay for themselves. Might take a while though. So rechargeable batteries are a must, but another thing we love is a charging station. And PDP Gaming tackles both with their Dual Ultra Slim Charge System. It comes with two rechargeable batteries with contact pins on the back, and those pins correspond with the battery covers, which you get two sets of for both the Xbox Series and previous Xbox One controllers. Then on the back it has a cutout for those pins so they can charge on the magnetic charging port. It's thin and low profile, stays in place with the micro suction strip underneath, over here we've got two charging notification lights. Then we've got two green lights below that give it this cool glow that automatically adjusts with an ambient light sensor so they don't blind you in the dark but are still bright enough to locate. And for those wondering, no, you can't disable them. The controllers fall right into place due to the shape that fits like a glove and that magnetic attraction from both the batteries and base which helps lock those pins into place. We've been using it for the last year now, works really well. It's a great kit that gets you both the rechargeable batteries as well as a way to display and keep them charged in the dock. If you also use your console to stream media and want to avoid using the Xbox controller to do so, check out 8 more traditional media remote. It's available in either short or long editions, this being the latter. In hand, it feels well made. The texture on the back slightly helps keep your grip. The buttons are nice and responsive and I like this rounded out design. It runs on two AAA batteries that you're gonna have to replace pretty often due to the motion activated backlighting. Although convenient, it constantly goes off with the slightest movement, so I'd suggest investing in rechargeable batteries. So it's an infrared remote, which on the one hand means it works right out of the box, no need to sync, you just point at the console and press a button. But on the other, you can't block the line of sight or else it won't work. Finally, the layout. Up top, we have the Xbox Guide button that yes, it can turn on the console, but no, it doesn't light up. It's, it's actually just a sticker. Next, we have all our media controls and navigation, which includes the one guide button that you can customize to launch a specific app. Then there's the number buttons at the bottom, which um, you'll probably never use. So already I'd recommend going with the short version. To sum it up, it's a well-made, simple media remote that just works, as long as you have line of sight and uh, some extra batteries. For those moments when you can't use a TV, Xbox Cloud Gaming is the next best way to access Game Pass titles on your phone, and it's an even better experience with a gamepad. Yes, you can use the official Xbox controller, but this is 8 Xbox edition of the SN30 Pro. It's an Android gamepad with a design inspired by the OG SNES controller. Although it feels good in hand, it's not as ergonomic as their SN30 Pro Plus, but that's the price you pay for portability. It connects via Bluetooth and inside it's got a 480 milliamp battery that should give you about 16 hours of playtime. The build quality here is stellar. The face buttons are a nice size, they feel great. Same for the sticks that have just the right amount of tension. The D-pad is stiff but accurate. The shoulder and triggers are very thin but work well. And yes, those are analog triggers that can also switch to digital. Then we've got a star button for on-the-fly button swapping and a profile button that you can program with their software which also lets you customize the controller. Now you can get it by itself or bundled with this fancy phone clip. It snaps right on the controller and it doesn't block any buttons or ports. The retractable clip is compatible with phones up to 3.4 inches wide. It's got two hinges which gives you a wide range of motion for positioning and you want to balance it correctly to avoid it feeling top heavy. For the most part, the controllers worked well with just about any game we threw at it, and with a solid internet connection, we experienced little to no noticeable input lag. That aside, it also works with other streaming services, but for those moments when you don't have internet, you can also use it with Android games that support a controller. 
So overall, it's a high quality gamepad that pairs well with Xbox Cloud Gaming on your phone that you can easily take on the go. And there you go, 11 down, and we already have enough for the next episode. But guys, let me know what you think of anything featured in this episode. What did you love? What did you hate? Drop it in the comments along with what you'd like to see next. Also, if you're looking to pick up anything featured in this video and want to support us at the same time, please check out the affiliate links down in the description below. And for those wondering, coming soon, we're taking a look at a new upgrade, and we got what feels like an infinite amount of Nintendo Switch gear just around the corner. So please be patient with me, guys. I have so much going on. Once again, this is Sergio AM. Thank you for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out, so please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio AM, and I'll see you for the next box.